everyone. Today we are going to do lesson 2.4 on order of operations. Okay, I like to check that I'm recording now because I recorded a whole lesson earlier and I wasn't recording. So now I like to go to the camera and make sure I'm recording. Okay, so lesson 2.4 is order of operations. We're actually going to do two days of this and I'm going to explain to you what the two days are going to be. So first thing we have to do is go over what is order of operations? Order of operations is telling you what to do first in a math problem. So for example, I'm gonna do this in red because I don't want you to even write this down. I want you to just pay attention. If I had two plus four times three, okay, I'm gonna write it down two times. Do not write this down, just pay attention. If I were to do two plus four is six and then times three, I would get 18, right? I did the two times two plus four first because it came first, right? That makes sense. But over here, I'm gonna do this part first. So I'm gonna do four times three is 12, and then I'm gonna add the two. So I'm kind of doing it backwards, right? When I do two plus 12 is 14. Okay, those were the exact same problem, but I got two different answers. Well, in math, you don't wanna get a different answer than somebody else because if you're calculating something like, Let's say in math you're calculating the rotation of the earth or something, or the speed of the earth. Then you don't want your calculation to say one thing and another scientist uh, to say a different number. So we have come up with, by we, I mean, you know, those people a long, long time ago, a system for math. And the basis is the order of operations. So this tells you what you're supposed to do first and, and second and third. Okay, so we're gonna write down the order of operations. The first thing you have to do is parentheses. Now today, we are not gonna be doing parentheses. Um, we are going to be doing, um, we're gonna be doing parentheses tomorrow, okay? So what, they don't even call these parentheses. Sorry, I don't wanna write that down. In, in algebra, we're gonna call them grouping symbols. And we're not even gonna talk about this today. In fact, this wasn't even in your notes, today, I mean, in your book today, but I wanna keep it on there because I want you to know that's coming up. So some grouping symbols are parentheses, brackets, and, there, and there's different types of brackets. Kids always have a hard time with those brackets, but that's okay. Okay, so these are the grouping symbols. This is what we're doing tomorrow. But I want you to know that is what you do first thing in order of operations. You won't have any of those today, so we're not going to really talk about it. Okay, next uh, that you do is exponents. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, the third thing that you do is multiply and divide. Okay, and here's the most important part. From left to right, from left to right. My board makes lots of noise. This is very important. In fact, I want you to underline it. If you have different colors, you can do it in different colors, but underline it. And the fourth thing you do is add and subtract. And that is also from left to right. Okay, and underline that also. Okay, so if I went too fast, hit pause, look at your screen and write this all down. Okay, let's talk about these two right here. This is where kids get order of operations mixed up. A lot of teachers teach this thing called PEMDAS to help kids remember what to do. PEMDAS is parentheses is the P. I'll write it down for y'all. Pim dos, okay, Pim dos. So parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. And that's a great mnemonic device to help you remember the order of operations. The problem is that when kids learn this and they say multiply, divide, they think they do multiplication first and then division. That is not true. You do not do addition first and then subtraction. 
you do addition and subtraction from left to right. So I'm gonna show you some examples and hopefully you'll get it by the end of this, how to do that from left to right. Okay, we only have three examples today. Hopefully that will be enough to, to get you on your way. Okay, I'm gonna put them all down low because I wanna keep this here. Okay, remember we're not gonna be doing grouping symbols today, that's tomorrow. I just wanted it up there, but these three are what we're gonna be doing today. So example one is, hold on, gotta make sure that I'm doing this right. Okay, two plus, sorry, I couldn't tell if that was a plus or not. Two plus three squared minus four, um, divided by two times three. Okay, I think I might have needed the whole board for this one. Yeah, I better erase this. It's going to go too far and then it's going to get confusing if y'all can't see it. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to rewrite this up here. Like for you to see all of it instead of it being way down there. Okay, so we're going to use our order of operations. This is a great example because it has everything we were talking about. Remember, we're doing the grouping symbols tomorrow. Okay, so what does it tell me to do first? Besides grouping symbols, there's no grouping symbols. Second is exponent. So do I have an exponent? Yes, I have one right here. So I'm going to do that first. So what is 3 squared? And please don't say 6. What is 3 squared? It's nine, right? Three squared means three times three. So right here, underneath here, I'm gonna put nine, okay? So that's the first part I did was the three squared. So now I have a plus, a minus, a division, and a times. So what does your, that's why I wanted to leave that other stuff up here, but I don't have a big enough board in my house. Okay, so what did it tell you to do? Well, look, maybe I should write it small over here. We do grouping symbols exponent, multiply and divide from left to right, and add and subtract from left to right. Okay, I wrote them all out over here, but you have them in your notes, right? So you can look back up. So after exponents, I did all my exponents, I only have one. <clears throat> now I'm gonna multiply and divide from left to right. It does not tell me to multiply first and then divide. It says do all the multiplication and division from left to right. So I'm going to look at my problem from the left to the right and I'm going to say where's where's my first multiplication or division? And where is that? Right here. Right? That's my first multiplication or division from left to right. So I'm going to leave everything else the same. 2 plus 9 minus and then I'm going to do the 4 divided by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2 and then I still have that times 3. Okay, so I did the division first, even though this says multiply and divide, because the division came first. Okay, I don't look at the plus and minus until I take care of all the multiplication and division. Okay, now I have plus, minus, and times, so the, the, what comes next is the multiply, right? Because I don't do add and subtract yet. I'm going to leave the add, I'm going to leave that subtraction, and I'm going to do the times. So 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, and then the last one I'm going to add and subtract from left to right. So now I only have adding and subtracting. At the very end that should be all you have left. And I'm going to go from left to right. So don't do the one that's easiest. Don't say, oh I know what 9 minus 6 is. Do them in the right order. So 2 plus 9 is 11. And then I minus 6 and I get 5. Okay, see, I needed the whole board for that. Okay, so some people say, well, why can't I just, I know this one, I want to do 9 minus 6 first. If you do 9 minus 6 first, you're going to get 3, and 3 plus 2 is 5, and that is the same answer. Well, why can't I just do it in any order? It's the same answer sometimes, but not all the time. So make sure that you're doing it in the right order, okay? Okay, I'm going to leave up my little cheat sheet right here, which y'all also have in your notes. And I'm going to do example two. Remember, we have three examples today. Okay, example two. We have two times five minus three 
2 times 5 minus 3, um, times 5 plus 8, um, divided by 4. Okay, so here I have times minus times plus division, right? So on this one, we actually can do more than one all at the same time because the multiplication and division, okay, notice I have no exponents. So I don't have to worry about exponents in this. So my next thing is multiply and divide. But because all my multiplication, see this multiplication, here's a multiplication and here's a division, I can do them all at the same time because none of them are connected. They're separated by a plus and a minus. So now I can do these all at the same time. You cannot always do this, okay? This is only possible when all of them are separated. If this was a time or a division, you can't do it. You have to start from left and then go to right. Okay, so I'm gonna do all of these at the same time. I get two times five is 10, minus three times five is 15, plus eight divided by four is two. Okay, now I have to do this left to right. So 10 minus 15, can I take 15 away from 10? No, I can't just take it away if I had just positive whole numbers. So I want to go back and do my integers. Okay, so how do I do integers? 10 minus 15 means 10 plus negative 15. You're not going to get away from integers. Don't think, oh, I already did that test. So I don't have to worry about it. You're going to be doing integers the rest of this year. So you need to learn these rules. If it's a minus, we're going to change it to plus a negative. Okay, now I have 10 plus negative 15. And that gives me negative 5 plus 2. So I did this part right here. That gave me negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. And that's my answer. Remember, if your signs are different, you subtract and use the sign of the bigger number. Okay, last one. Everybody good with this? Um, yes, y'all can't ask questions, but you can always hit pause. And text me and ask me a question if I'm available to answer it for you, okay? Okay, example three is going to be long, and I want you to try it on your own. Okay, so this is going to be 2 cubed minus 1 squared plus 5 times 4 minus 3 squared plus 9 divided by 3. Okay, I want, I so want to give you some hints on this, but I'm not going to give you any hints. I think a couple of y'all can get this without me helping you at all. So go ahead and hit pause. Everybody try it on your own, even if it looks scary, and then come back and let's check it together and we'll see if you got it right. So hit pause now. Okay, now you should be back. Let's go through all of these. We have no grouping symbols, so we're going to start with exponents. So I have a lot of exponents here. I have 2 to the third power, 1 squared, and 3 squared. So we're going to work with all those. Okay, here was the part I wanted to give you a hint on, but I didn't want to because I want to see if you got it right. 2 cubed is, or 2 to the third power is not 6. That's probably one of the most missed ones I get every single year that I've been teaching is 2 cubed, people put 6. It means two times two times two, and that is not six. Two plus two plus two is six, but two times two times two is what? Two times two is four, times two is eight, right? Do that with black. Okay, then I have a minus sign. What's one squared? One, not two. Remember, it's one times one. One times one is one, not two. Okay, then I'm just going to write the rest of this because these aren't exponents. Minus 3 squared is 9. Okay, most kids get that one. Okay. Okay, so I've got all my exponents here, right? Now I have multiplication, division, add, subtract. So what I'm going to do next is multiply and divide from left to right. Well, first I'm going to look at where my multiplying and dividing are. They're right here and right here. If they are separated, you can do them at the same time, okay? But if they're connected, if this was, if this division sign was right here, you cannot do them at the same time, only if they're separated by pluses or minuses. So these are separated. So I'm gonna go ahead and work the 
leave the minuses and the plus, and work the multiplication and division. So 5 times 4 is 20. Leave the minus, leave the plus, and then 9 divided by 3 is 3. Okay, now I have minuses and pluses, and I have them, that's all I have, so I have to work from left to right. And because I know in my last problem I had some negative numbers, I'm going to go ahead and change my minus signs here. I, you could do it up here also, but sometimes it causes confusion. So I just wait until it's time to do the adding and subtracting. I'm going to change this to plus and negative and plus and negative. Okay, now let's work this problem. 8 plus negative 1 is 7. Okay, I'm going to write everything else down. Okay, 7 plus 20. Okay, so I'm going, and you can, some of y'all, not all of you, you have to know your limits and know if you want to get a problem right, how do I need to work it myself? Some people can do this whole line in their head and they can keep track of it. Okay, that's 7 plus 20 and they can keep track of it. Other ones need to write it down. So I'm kind of writing it down, but I'm also going to show you how, if you can do that in your head, that you can do it. So I get 7. So now I'm going to add 7 to 20. That's 27, right? And then I have the rest of it. So now I have 27 plus negative 9. That's going to be 18. And then I have 18 plus 3, and that's 21. Okay, and that's my answer. Hopefully I have at least one or two of y'all get that right. That's a long process to get all the way through. But you can do it. I know you can do it. Okay, so in your homework today, get through the whole thing. Check in the back of the book. If you got it wrong, go back and try to pinpoint where you got it wrong. If you can't find it, then just start all over and see if maybe you'll do it a different way, okay? And then tomorrow, we're gonna to do order of operations, but we're gonna add in those grouping symbols. This one is really fun to do, okay? Okay, see y'all tomorrow.